Your presence and existence has a purpose to learn today. I want to shake you awake and push you forward by empowering you to learn the most important theorem that is the Wilson theorem. So I'll make sure that you will strive to solve by your own terms and my aim is not to comfort you but to prompt you into the action. And let's get started with today's video on the proof of Wilson theorem. So I'll try to keep each and every point into your head so that your learning process will be easier. So in today's topic that is Wilson theorem. So the statement states that if P is a prime then P minus 1 factorial plus 1 is congruent to 0 mod P or else P minus 1 factorial is congruent to minus 1 mod P. So let me tell you the difference between the Fermat's theorem and the Wilson theorem. So in the Fermat's theorem, so we talk about the powers. So if 2 power 50 when divided by 17, then what will be the remainder? So the remainder is should be solved when a certain number, a bigger number when divided by a prime number. In this case, so in Wilson theorem, so if there is any factorials, so we have to check whether the this prime number divides this larger number. So only the divisibility, so whether it is divisible or not is seen in Wilson theorem, whereas the remainder should be found out in Fermat's theorem. So that is the main difference between the Fermat's theorem and the Wilson theorem statements. So here, if P is a prime number given, then, so after then we have to prove P minus 1 factorial plus 1 is congruent to 0 mod P. As I have said you, if A is congruent to B mod M, then certainly that M should divide the difference that is A minus B. So that is the thing according to the congruence definition we have to follow here. So according to the proof, what is given? So P is a prime number is given and we need P minus 1 factorial plus 1 is congruent to 0 mod P. So as 2 is the minimum prime number. So I'll check with 2. So if I put P is equal to 2, then see what happens here. In place of P, if I keep P is equal to 2, the minimum prime number, see whether it works out or not. In place of P, if I keep 2, this will be 2 minus 1 factorial plus 1 is congruent to 0 mod 2. So in place of P, I kept 2 here. So this is clearly 2 minus 1 is 1, 1 factorial is again 1 and this is 1 congruent to 0 mod 2 and this is 2 congruent to 0 mod 2. As I have told you, if A is congruent to B mod M, then this M divides the difference A minus B. So here this 2 divides 2 minus 0, clearly 2 divides 2. So only the divisibility only we have to check in Wilson theorem. Therefore the theorem is true. So if it is divisible, so 2 divides 2. Next, coming to P is equal to 3. 3 is also the next prime number and therefore, so if you keep in this formula, that is P minus 1 factorial. See here, this is P minus 1 factorial plus 1 is congruent to, this is 0 mod P. So, we have to check. So, in place of P, if I keep 3 here, this will be 3 minus 1 factorial plus 1 is congruent to 0 mod. In place of P, I have kept 3 here. So, this is 3 minus 1, this is 2 factorial, that is 1 into 2, which is equal to 2, plus 1 is congruent to 0 mod 3. See here, 3 congruent to 0 mod 3. So, here also the same case. If A is congruent to B mod M, then M should divide the difference, that is 3 minus 0. So, 3 divides 3 minus 0. Clearly, 3 divides 3. So, here also 2 divides 2. The theorem is true. So, for the first prime number and the second prime number and so on. So if you check, see here, let P greater than 2. So every prime number which is greater than 2, you have to consider. And A is any integer. And see here, this A lies between 1 and P minus 1. So if you take this conditions, that is P should be greater than 2 and A is any integer and A lies in between 1 and P minus 2. So here what is given? P is a prime number and clearly the GCD of A comma P is equal to 1. Then according to the linear congruence, so we have a linear congruence. So according to our linear congruence and hence the linear congruence that is AX congruent to 1 mod P has a unique solution. So we have a lemma here or a corollary. So we have a unique solution say X naught. So what is the linear equation here? That is AX is congruent to this is 1 mod P. 1 mod P. So here we have a unique solution. So let us suppose that A dash. So this A dash belongs to X naught. So this A dash 
is also lies between 1 and p minus 1. As you take any number, it should lie between 1 and p minus 1. This a dash is also in between 1 and p minus 1. So, this is the linear equation. So, in this linear equation, if you keep the x value as this is the solution a dash. So, a a dash is congruent to this is 1 mod p. So, let a dash is equal to a. So, a dash is equal to a a into a is congruent to this is 1 mod p, a square congruent to this is 1 mod p. So here, see if you take this case, so a square is congruent to 1 mod p. Clearly, if I subtract 1 on both sides, so a square minus 1 is equal to 1 minus 1 which is equal to 0 mod p. So a square minus 1 is nothing but a plus 1 into a minus 1 which is congruent to 0 mod p. So here, either a plus 1 is congruent to 0 mod p or a minus 1 is congruent to 0 mod p. Clear? So, there are two cases here. And whereas, if you take this one, a square is congruent to 1 mod p according to our definition. So, p should certainly divide the difference that is p divides a square minus 1. If a is congruent to b mod p, what you will do? p should divide a minus p. So, here a square minus 1. So, a square minus 1 is nothing but a plus 1 into a minus 1. So, clearly P divides A minus 1 into A plus 1. So, P is a prime number. So, it should either divide A minus 1 or it should either divide A plus 1. So, here A is less than P. Clearly, A minus 1 is also less than P. So, A minus 1 is less than P. So, P is a prime number. So, prime number should divide a prime number. The factors of the prime number are 1 and itself. So, this is not possible that a minus 1 is still smaller than p and therefore this value should be equal to 0. So, then only p divides 0 that is a minus 1 is equal to 0 that is a is equal to 1 and see here p divides a plus 1. So, p is equal to a plus 1. So, it should also be the same factor that is p is equal to a plus 1 as p is a prime number the factors are 1 and itself and therefore 1 and itself therefore a plus 1 should be equal to p and p value is equal to an a value so a from this a value is equal to p minus 1 so we got a values as a is equal to 1 it should be either a is equal to 1 or a is equal to a is equal to p minus 1 clear and therefore if you see either a is equal to 1 or a is equal to p minus 1 so these values are among 1, 2, 3, 4 and so on p minus 1. So here for a is equal to 1 and a is equal to p minus 1. So the statement is unique and therefore we have to suppose that a dash not equal to a. So if you take a dash not equal to a, so we have to delete these two terms among these. And we have to take an another element among from 2 to, so here it is p minus 2. So this value will be p minus 2. So if I select any number in between 2 to p minus 2 and see the distinct different different numbers of a a dash belongs to the set 2, 3, 4 and so on till here p minus 2 as I have deleted these two. p minus 2 containing p minus 3 elements. Total they are p minus 3 elements after deleting these two p minus 3 elements and these p minus 3 elements form the pairs such that their product see here these p minus 3 elements forms the product of each pair so which is congruent to 1 mod p so we can form so pairs of see here so if i delete 1 and p minus 1 so these two are uh, taken away and the remaining are all the even numbers so they can form a pair so no, no integer is left over as they are even number of integers and therefore we can form the pairs when a belongs to p minus 1 and a dash also belongs to p minus 1 so here our linear equation is nothing but ax congruent to 1 mod p so in place of x if i write a dash so a a dash is congruent to 1 mod p so for all these in between integers 2 to p minus 2 if we apply modulus see here this will be 2 3 4 and so on p minus 2 which is congruent to after making a pair this will be inverse of one another that is 2 into 2 inverse 3 into 3 inverse and so on so till p minus 2 into p minus 2 inverse into modulo p so here inverse got cancelled so this will be 1 1 1 1 for p minus 3 as they are p minus 3 elements so 1 is multiplied for p minus 3 times this is modulo p 
clear so here so this is 2 3 4 and so on p minus 2 congruent to this is 1 mod p so now i am multiplying both sides with 1 and p minus 1 so in front there is 1 and in front p minus 1 i am multiplying on either sides either sides so this will be 1 till p minus 1 which is equal to p minus 1 factorial and this is 1 into p minus 1 which is p minus 1 modulo p and see here this can be written as so here there is minus 1 so I am adding both sides with plus 1 so this will be p minus 1 factorial plus 1 is congruent to p mod p here comes so the remainder when p is divided by p so after making a subtraction p minus p which is equal to 0 so this will be 0 mod p or else if you take from here so this will be p minus 1 factorial is congruent to so if I subtract this one so if I subtract p minus 1 minus p so this what remains here minus 1 so this will be minus 1 mod p so here we can end like this or else we can add 1 on both sides and we can bring and we make a difference of these two p minus p this is 0 mod p the remainder when p is divided by p here clear and therefore this is the wilson theorem so according to the wilson theorem so it is very clear that each and every step i have explained you so p is a prime number and p minus 1 factorial plus 1 congruent to 0 mod p so i have shown this one as well as p minus 1 is congruent to this is minus 1 mod p so this is minus 1 mod p here p minus 1 factorial plus 1 is congruent to 0 mod p so this is p minus 1 factorial plus 1 is congruent to 0 mod p or else p minus 1 factorial is congruent to minus 1 mod p so here this is p minus 1 factorial congruent to minus 1 mod p as i have taken the difference between these two after taking the difference so this is minus 1 mod p so clearly this is about the wilson theorem hope you guys understand so if you follow each and every step one after the other one after the other taking clarity on each and every point so you can understand and you can solve and you can do the proof of by by your own as this is the most important theorem for all the btech bsc and msc students and hope you'll avail this opportunity and there is a playlist for you so many videos are uploaded for your preparation and it will be damn easy and if you go through any topic in the playlist so certainly it will be very important so don't miss and if you really like this video you know what to do please pass it on to your siblings friends and whomever you like the most and keep watching my next video it will be on the questions the problems related to the wilson theorem and this is from number theory discrete mathematics thank you so much for watching and stay until the end